Hi everyone. I thought I would have a go at another picture from this um, sheet of hiking adventures, tiny pictures by Agatha Pop. Um, I did this one here with the campfire which was lots of fun and uh, I really want to have a go at this mushroom basket so I thought I would have a go with you. Sorry it's a bit bright but as I come in you'll be able to see the, uh, see the outlines better. Um, my lamp is uh, really bright and shiny. I think it's because it's so dark outside. My lamp adjusts to the light in the room. But hopefully that's okay now. So it's quite a simple idea. We've got basically a basket, some mushrooms and a little bit of greenery. So it's quite nice to do. Um, I thought we'd start with the basket as it's the biggest sort of part of the picture. And uh, I'm just going to get going really and then sort of also explain to you now this is a download so it's a PDF file which you can print. Um, this is the Bista. I'm going to start off doing some, oh don't want to get too close, blurred, um, some parts of the basket. Um, <clears throat> so um, it's available on Agatha Pop's um, Etsy page. I think her page had been down for a little bit but it's all back up and working nicely. I'm putting a bit, a few more layers under here. We want to try and go for a more three-dimensional look. That's also why I'm putting more colour on the edges. Um, and she has put a special discount code into my link. Um, I do have to say as a disclaimer, she sends me these pages for free to sort of promote on my channel. And... Uh, she gives me a discount code to pass on to you guys so if you use the link in my description to go to her Etsy store you can get 10% off and that doesn't just apply to these that's anything you pop in your basket um, from her store it doesn't apply across all of Etsy she doesn't have that sort of control but uh, so if you fancy having a having a go then uh, then you can do that and or any of her really cute little pictures now I feel that her style is fairly similar to Johanna Basford and Rita Berman's and that's I think why I really like it um, it's nice and clean there isn't a lot of um, shading drawn in or there's no grayscale there's a little bit you know we've got a few lines here just indicating shadow and here which is just enough to give us a bit of guidance without being too daunting I sometimes find too many lines like on a um, Kirby Rosanne's or a uh, Mel Pomeney and Shatsapanagio 2 picture can be daunting so um, to uh, keep it clean and simple I find for me is a little bit easier it might not be the case for you but uh, anyway, what I'm doing with each of these is I'm going to try and make them a bit lighter in the middle. I'm, I've overemphasized it here just to show you. I will be making it a little bit more subtle because if you think about how the basket is woven, it's actually dipping in here where these lines are holding it in, these pieces. So it's going to come out and in. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but uh, hopefully you can sort of imagine what, a basket might look like so a bit, I'm just darkening this a little because that was too um, light on the uh, center part but by leaving the center a little bit paler it gives that impression of that sort of bend in the uh, wood I don't know wicker I suppose it is so we're just um, carry on so just a bit lighter here and darker here and then I'll just tidy it up as I go. So I hope everyone's well today. I have taken a little break from our house houses tutorials. Um, a couple of reasons for that. Firstly um, I fancied doing something a little bit more autumnal just today. I don't know why. Um, secondly gives you a chance to catch up if you haven't um, done them all because I know that you know 10 videos is quite a lot to sort of catch up on um, which which are the 10 that have gone out so far but also um, um, some of you may not have that book or want or may have already done that page so I thought I'd do something for everybody 
um, to have a go at. And then next week, um, I suspect, the plan is at the moment to get the house videos out next week. Um, so I haven't forgotten them, don't worry, they will be done. And at the moment I'm planning on doing them in Prismacolor, which is another reason that I'm not doing them, because I'm procrastinating, because Prismas scare me a bit. I'm getting used to them, and uh, it's fine, but it's just, uh, you know, all the sharpening and the possible breaking on camera. Ugh, it's a bit frightening, whoops. See, I was so frightened I nodged my piece of paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see. I'm sure it'll all be fine. But, um, so I'm procrastinating. I tend, I, I don't normally procrastinate, but, uh, yeah. I'll, I, I will do them. I'm hoping, actually, I might record them tomorrow. But, or some of them, at least. But we'll see. Um, my boys are in college, um, university today. I want to keep calling it college. When I went there, it was a college. Um, if anyone um, is, remembers the old um, university system from when I was at university, there were. It was either a university, a polytechnic, or a college of further education. And the place they're going to used to be a college of further education when I went there. So it's like the universities with the top places and the poly. Um, techniques were the next sort of top places and then the colleges were a bit rubbish but um, so yeah I was at the college and then while I was there um, the government brought in this rule that every college and polytechnic could apply for university status I think they just wanted to make our country's education system seem better by us having more universities to be honest I think in I think that's what it was I don't know I don't know what the official reasoning was. I didn't really follow politics. Um, but um, our college struggled and struggled to get university status. And it didn't while I was there. Um, they didn't have enough resources, enough books in the library, enough PhD students, all that sort of thing. Um, but they got there eventually after I left. Um, but now, of course, books in the library isn't really a problem. Although they do have libraries. Um, all the books were online so they're scanned in and all the journals and things everything's online so I suspect but I suppose they still have to pay for it so they need the funding to pay the money but anyway oh can I hear a train going by my boys are on the train not that one well I hope not or it's going to be late um, they both had a slightly later start this morning but it's this morning we tried an experiment to see whether they would be ready in time to leave the house at half past seven, which is some mornings they're going to have to be leaving at half seven, which is quite early. Um, so this morning I experimented with um, getting myself and them organised and they would have been ready within uh, by 20 past seven to leave the house. So that's really good. They didn't actually have to leave that early today. They had to leave... One didn't start till 9.45, the one that's got a shorter train journey. And the other one started at 10.15, the one that's got a longer train journey. So it all worked out well. They got the same train because the train um, drops off in one place and then changes direction and goes and drops off in the other place. So they they can get the same train if their class are at the same time. Tomorrow they've actually both got to go to the same campus so they can travel together and be together in the day which will be interesting I don't know whether they'll stick together or not they didn't always tend to when they were at college and stuff together but they did have a good day yesterday their first day I think they were really tired when they came in right I'm going to take a slightly darker color and emphasize some of the shadows on this I think I'm just going to use my favorite dark sepia if I can find it there it is <clears throat> now you see I've missed some bits out those are going to be a slightly different colour I think I'm just going to put some shadow in here along the edge of each of these yeah it was sort of um, one of them had they basically got sat down in a lecture theatre and talked to they were told that if they what the attendance expectations were and if they um, um, if they failed a certain amount of um, classes, they get thrown off and all this sort of thing, you know, all that sort of scary stuff. 
and uh, then one of them did, they both did sort of ice breaking team building type exercises but one of them was they couldn't talk to each other and they had to try and achieve something not talking and see how they got on. I think I'm going to fill those bits in as if they're a bit shadowy in there. Which seemed a bit silly because it's not really going to get you talking to people if you can't talk to them. But anyway, the other one had loads of different things but he said it was across the whole of the business school. So it... This is a burnt sienna that I'm going to use for these other bits. For these bits I'm just going to fill them in. Um, so the students who are doing finance, business, law, accounting all together. So a lot of the students that my son met weren't actually going to be doing the same classes as him. So he thought it was a bit of a waste of time really because most of the people he chatted to he won't be with. He did chat to a couple of guys who he felt he might have bonded with that he might be able to be within his classes so that was really good I was pleased about that my other son said he talk he had to do a little bit of group work and he talked to two people one that he'd been to college with they happened to be standing next to each other when groups were allocated so they just got put together so he already knew this child he said they you know he's okay he's a sort of okay lad but he's a bit annoying as some people are so he wasn't too sure but anyway and the other person he he was paired with was a a year six student I don't understand the yearing um they're in year three even though they're first starting and uh there are so this year six student was sort of in the final year of their degree but they had only just started at the uni I suspect they transferred from somewhere else and so they were doing the sort of induction, intro, team building type stuff to get them used to the place. But um, he said probably never see them ever again. So, <laughs> so he didn't really get a chance to bond with anybody, which was a bit of a shame. But today he might do... Today he's got a tutor meeting, I think. And then a personal tutor meeting and a sort of meet and greet pizza session. So I made him a packed lunch because I just wasn't sure um, quite what was going on, just in case, you know. And uh, we'll see. Um, and my other son has got a another sort of lecture session, you know, intro lecture. And they're not really, they're not teaching you anyone that any anything they're just talking to them about their expectations now I'm going to get my dark sepia again and do a little bit of um, shadowing in a few areas particularly under here and then I'm going to draw on a few lines um, and he's got a bowling this afternoon they're going bowling I think you know, as a sort of another, um, I'm going to draw on a few lines like this to make it look a bit more like wicker. Wicker to me is sort of lines on it. Um, so yeah, I think it's another sort of team building type thing. So he, he is going, although he says he's no good at bowling, but you know, I think um, the um, other boy, he, they've got their social on Friday and it's mini golf. So he's not very, he's really bad at it. So, uh, and gets very frustrated. So I don't know how good that's going to be. But anyway, thankfully I won't be there. Okay, there's our basket. Feeling happy with that. Now... I'm going to do the bit of greenery next, just to move to a different colour really. We've done a lot of brown. The mushrooms are going to be grey-brown as well. So let's do the um, these three little ferns, I want to say. And I'm going to grab the permanent green for those. I'm going to give them a sharpen. Give it a sharpen, not the ferns. Sharpening them would be very odd. <laughs> 
sorry, strange mood today. And I'm going to put a lot of intense colour down into the bottom of the leaf and then taper it off. And I'm going to use another colour on the tip. I know ferns don't look like this. It probably, we can pretend it's something completely different. But I like the yellowy greenness of this pencil. So that's why I'm using it. Sometimes I use colours I don't use very often to, uh, you know, use them up or to sort of try and discover new colours that I might end up liking or colour combinations. But um, today I'm just in the mood for using colours that I like and why not? So uh, that's what I'm doing. <coughs> I can hear a um, finch outside which is rather nice. They make a little pip 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 noise. I don't think you'll be able to hear it on the camera because um, the window is shut and uh, it's very sweet. They uh, they get a bit mad at this time of year because um, the, um, they love seeds and around here, not in these gardens but along the canal path, there are lots of um, teasels. This is earth green yellowish I'm going to use for the tips. And uh, they absolutely adore the um, teasels and uh, so they get very well fed. I guess they need to be before it starts getting cold. And if you walk along the canal path past the field um, or the bank, it's sort of on the path, it's not really a separate field where the teasels are growing if it's really quiet and you're the only person as you walk along you can suddenly disturb them a whole flock of um, finches there's usually goldfinches will just fly out and away you know obviously they get scared of you and uh, yeah because they've all been sitting on their own little teasel eating all the seeds I used to feed them actually in the garden and uh, um, they used to, um, what did I used to feed them? <clears throat> I'm just grabbing this darker green. This is the pine green. And I just want to put a little, make this one here that's at the back a little bit darker. It's just so that that one that's in front stand out a bit. Yeah, it's better. Okay, now we've got a bit of grass going on in front of here. I think we'll do that next. Um, I might just grab this sort of, is that the grass green? That's a leaf green. The grass green is always a bit pale. But I'm going to use it anyway and then I might darken it with the leaf green or something after. And let's just put a little area of grass under here and around. Now we've got these tufts here drawn in, we'll deal with those in a minute. We'll just get a layer down first. Now this paper I'm using is actually cream, it's copy paper but it's cream, it's a bit too shiny really for my liking but it, it's okay. And uh, so the colours may look different to if you print on a white paper but not significantly so between cream and white. I'm just going to sort of fade that out a bit. Um, I want it darker nearer the object, so I'm going to grab this one. This is actually the permanent green. Um, I think it's sharp enough. And I'm going to do it a bit darker around the edges of these um, tufty bits so they sort of stand out. And then just as if they create there's a bit of shadow under some of the items like the basket. And the uh, mushrooms. Like that. Now looking at the mushrooms, I feel there are only really a couple of different types. This one here looks like an oyster mushroom. And the rest of these could be chestnut mushrooms or just white capped mushrooms, that sort of thing. So they're not massively different. We're going to do this oyster mushroom first because that one is usually quite pale. I'm going to actually use my warm grey one, which is a really pale colour. So 
sorry, it's really hard for you to see. And do this sort of top bit here, because normally they're quite white. And I'm just going to add a bit of colour, because I don't want it to look completely white. I wasn't going to do a sort of background behind it. So I'm just going to fill it in. Like this. And then there's the base just slightly darker. So I've grabbed the warm grey too. So really not much, much darker. And I'll see whether that works. I'm going to layer it up a fair bit. Especially here. Because under this bit there'll be some shadow. Underneath this sort of cap. And then just fade it a little bit down towards the stem. I'm just going to grab my warm grey one again, give it a sharpen and just go over a few bits that look like they haven't had a very good amount of colour on them. Just that's it. Right, I'm just going to check my tablet to see if my children have been in touch with me because I asked them to tell me when they got to college, university I should say. Um, it doesn't, one of them hasn't. And I don't think the other one has either. So there we go. Right, the next set of mushrooms are going to be slightly darker. I'm thinking a chestnut mushroom. Now, they're often a little bit brownish, but not too brown. So what I'm going to do is grab the nougat, sorry this is the raw umber, not the nougat, and just do a little bit of brown on the top, like the slightest touch on the top of all of them. We're only going to concentrate on the tops to start with. We'll worry about the gill part and the stems later. Now you could do these as different types, but to me they all look the same, apart from that one oyster mushroom. Now for the grey. Go, whoops, I'm going to drop my grey. It's the cold grey, warm grey three, so it's not a cold grey. I like using warm greys for mushrooms. And we're going to think a bit more about the shapes. So it's going to be a little bit dark on the edge and less towards the center. There won't be a shine line. Mushrooms are very dull. But if we can just make them a little bit lighter in the middle, it will help to emphasize that shape that they have. And we're just doing the same on all of them. As I said, you don't have to do yours all the same colour. And you could even, if you wanted, do them like toadstools, red and white, that sort of thing. All more adventurous colours. But I'm figuring that these are being picked to eat. So I want to pick them to be the type, um, colour them as the type of mushrooms that I know are edible. You know, um, I would never forage in a wood for mushrooms. I know some people have a really good knowledge but I wouldn't even um, trust anyone else to pick them. I think I want to buy mine from the supermarket where they've been cultivated and everybody knows what they are. So there are some apparently ones that look a bit like these and they're really really poisonous and they can kill you. So I think I'd rather not to be honest. I most people would feel the same. It's a bit of a risk. Now to me that colour looks a little bit wrong. What I'm going to do is get the nougat, which I did mention earlier, and then and do some little blobs. Because I think if you think about what a chestnut mushroom looks like, it seems to have little bits of dirt or sort of colouration on the skin. little dots and lines I think make it look a bit more like it is a chestnut mushroom I mean you can get I haven't done this but you could get a photo of one and you know properly see what it looks like that's what I would normally do if I wanted it to look 
really realistic but I'm not that worried just get a little bit okay now the gill part we've got it showing in a few of these it's usually quite dark um, I'm going to use a fairly dark grey this is uh, the warm grey 5 okay and um, let's start with this one now I'm thinking it would be a little bit dark on the very edge there maybe not quite so dark towards the middle and it's always very liney I'm going to draw in more lines like that I mean it might depend on the uh, variety as to how many lines there are but it's got a few lines drawn on because some of them have loads of lines really close together I'm going to make this one a little bit lighter and then draw in loads of lines um, yeah it depends on the variety but the type I buy I buy Portobellini or Portobello or Chestnut you usually seem to have a lot of lines like that and we have this one again trying to keep it light yeah, one thing I did when I was on holiday was I tried to avoid looking at the news. I think I looked at it twice and that was it. And uh, I've tried to keep that up since I've been home. I have looked at it daily, but I try not to get keep checking it and checking it, which I used to do. I think it's just a bad habit. Nothing exciting happens within a day, but, you know and uh, I was wasting a lot of time and energy it's really de-energising that's the word now I'm going to use for the stems just looking I think I'm going to try the warm grey too and if it's a bit too pale I'll, um, I'll add in something else just sharpen it now with the stems again we want to try and make them look a little bit more three dimensional so we make them darker on that edge and a bit less in the middle a little bit on the top but mainly down here and the same with this one yeah tomorrow my boys have got their freshest fare which is Basically, I just have a wander around and pick up freebies, I think. But uh, I'm not entirely sure what goes on. But uh, they're together in the same place and they're just going to not get up so early and just poodle along when they're ready, really. And just um, not spend too much time there, really. Which is good. So... Uh, yeah, they'll be home. They were so tired last night. They were really grumpy, um, which is expected. And they had to do some stuff as well. Um, their phones hadn't properly worked. I just realised I'm not in shot. Now, we've just got these little stones here to do. I'm just trying to think of what colour to do them because I want a different colour. But... Um, nothing too different so I'm going to grab my dark sepia first to do a little bit of shadows on my mushrooms um, just where there sort of overlaps and uh, think about those stones at the same time I'm thinking maybe um, Uh, probably a cold grey might work. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going on where there's outlines really. I'm putting in a few shadows here and there where I think there might be just a shadow. I don't know how this one is staying in the basket. Just have a really long bit going down there. <clears throat> and mm, 
So yes, I'm going to go, I was just pondering again on colour, I'm going to go for the cold grey. Okay, oh, I think I put a bit of shadow under the basket there too. Pencil's running away, let's leave it there. Okay, so I'm going to start, let's do, start with the cold grey three and start lighter. We don't want them to really stand out. You know, the basket is what I want to be, this sort of star of the show. So I'm thinking just a little bit. Oh, my lead is breaking. It's rare for a poly. So I've just gone around the edge and then I'm going to go up to there and maybe leave a bit of white for shine because this could be a shiny stone. I don't know if that's really worked. I'm just going to sharpen this. I'm going to break the lead off. Whoops, break the lead off and sharpen it because that was... I need it pointy but not wobbly. There we go. So all the way round a little line. It's quite small this to be doing this sort of detail but it's okay. And that one, this one, I'm just going to put a few more shadows in as well. Let's just brush away some pencil sharpening so I've managed to get all over the page. Okay, so I'm going back to my dark sepia just to finish off. And I'm going to put a little shadow in here. A bit more under here. Go fiddle a bit more because you know. <laughs> there we go. I think I'm going to finish there. So I really enjoyed that. So I hope that was okay. Even if you don't have this picture, it will give you a little help, hopefully, on how to colour a basket, how to colour a mushroom, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have a really super day. And yeah, happy colouring. <laughs>